running here. Boop. Boom. All right. Give me a moment here while I set things up. I'm going to be talking about <clears throat> Powell and a lot of the... Um, so let me get my bearings here. Let's get my bearings. <clears throat> All right. Let's organize my stuff. All right. So, uh, first of all, <clears throat> there was a session that was happening. Yeah. I think it might have been today and Powell was giving his speech I think the basics of the speech was it's just going to be uh, you know firmer the the firming word that they use uh, they're going to stay <clears throat> keeping with the um, keeping with the rates the way they are for longer um, a lot of it due to you know, inflation but you know if you watched a bit of my stuff then uh, it's also because of the offshore dollar market Powell wants to keep that under control so you don't have all the US funny money going all around the world funding all kinds of crazy stuff that's going on <clears throat> so he was giving a presentation today and some climate activists or, you know, come on stage and start doing their protests. So his security people take them, um, put them aside, and the mic was still on and basically just says, yeah, close the fucking door. Like, just complete g style just no just no shred of any sort of panic or anything like it's just said it like he's had it with these people he's just had it and i think that's overall the metaphor of jerome powell right now it's like he's up to his eyeballs with all the craziness that's going on and he just is tired of it and he, he's basically the adult in the room so i'm not i'm not shilling for a central bank but when a central bank is doing things that potentially are are, are <clears throat> basically important you can't run zero or negative interest rate policy for so long it's basically one you don't have a central bank <clears throat> And the amount of stupid money that flows around the system just becomes asinine and all the crazy stuff. Like, just go look at some of the earlier this year, some of the uh, spending bills coming out of the U.S. Uh, somebody's like going to make like a, a Thanos glove for something, and needs like a hundred thousand bucks for that. There's like a, you, know, you could just go and look at that. It's like a, all kinds of gross spending on this garbage. So let's take a look at <clears throat> some of the things that are happening. So <clears throat> one of the things that came up recently, and these, these are seemingly narrative bending uh, for the most part. So first, the, the Court of Appeal suspends Trump's gag order, deeming it unconstitutional. Well, thank you very much and whether you love him or hate him doesn't matter it's you know the fact that in the usa there's free speech laws and gagging him on what because he's going to say mean things oh my goodness oh clutch your pearls good god if people are like screaming about that then uh you know i i makes me wonder how some of our ancestors pioneered their way through these you know 
areas of USA and Canada and made up a homestead and actually got us to where we are today. And now, my God, some of these people fall on a pillow and they think it's, it's the end of it. It's disgusting. Um, another one is lawyers meet with Florida Attorney General to prosecute Anthony Fauci. Uh, he, yeah, that's another... You know, all all the stuff that's going on. Maybe they're going to do it for the puppies. All the puppies that he's injured and created problems with. Yeah, we we know it's it's uh, <coughs> yeah, it's it's a thing that I can't say because I might want to put this on the YouTube. So next he had Vivek, uh, Vivek calling out the media during the G the third. Uh, GOP debate and he just he went on a great tirade uh, during that um, called out the mainstream media uh, called out uh, Haley on it um, yeah, for kind of the the I guess war prostitute that she is but then you know called out DeSantis as well. You know, does, does DeSantis wear the heels, uh, you know, the ammo heels, the, the military industrial complex heels, or is he just doing it for the looks? So, um, yeah, DeSantis really does belong in, in Florida. Keep doing the thing that you're doing in Florida. Then Pennsylvania voting machines get shut down due to the votes getting flipped. Oh, who would have thought? You know, who would have thunk? Really, um, voting machines getting shut down, getting flipped in Pennsylvania. Uh, so, you know, here we go again. A federal judge upholds Florida law banning men from women's sports. Oh, great! Common sense breaking out again. Uh, <laughs> uh, at least it's in Florida. So, hopefully, others start to jump in on this because at what point do you not have women's sports anymore when is that completely gone and eradicated just because men who'd place in 200th in their division decide hey i'm i'm just going to you know i want to win something so you know here's a way of playing the game and winning uh and then just say i'm not a man i'm a girl i belong in this division now and then just have biological males up on the podium <clears throat> which means if you have daughters if that keeps up then they won't have any way to get scholarships or you know sports scholarships primarily if you want to go to university on that and then men are dominating all the competitions that you're in <clears throat> what do we do eh Republicans, so oh yeah, um, Vivek did this as well. Republicans call on the RNC chair, Rona McDaniel, to resign because it looks like there's been a massive losing streak. Uh, and the common denominator is the RNC chair has been the same for a while and just really just hasn't been chalking up the win. So that was another great thing that Vivek did. He was just, he was just saying all the quiet parts out loud during the last debate and that was just awesome to see so hopefully at some point we get like a rogan or something on spotify or on a you know get tucker get rogan get musk get them to hold a debate and my thing is make it for about eight hours just put them all in the room make them comfortable at least and just make it conversational it just keep going and going and just wait for those suckers to fall over and and tap out you know do it that way um and you get people like trump would probably just completely dominate and have a fun time with that i think some of the other ninnies i think vivek will will be able to stay on for that but some of these other um just haven't worked a day in their life probably can't take on that amount of mental uh, work for that a long amount of time just it takes so much power to lie constantly so <clears throat> then there was the um 
the Douglas Mackey facing prison for the Hillary Clinton meme, which it is quite scary that you can't make particular jokes, um, especially in, especially with Hillary Clinton. Uh, and if you can't make jokes, then you know, at, at what point do they get us for anything, even sitting here and talking about this stuff? Anyhow, continuing on, Elon Musk introduced Grok, the better, unbiased version of Bill Gates' chat GPT. And, yeah, so we'll, we'll wait for that to come out. It, um, it's, of course, getting the lefties all up in a tizzle, which is a lot of fun, always. Uh, the Democrat Michigan Attorney General faces impeachment for failing to prosecute election fraud. Oh, my goodness, who would have thought there? Who would have thought, you know, it, but the reason this is coming out, because this isn't just, um, <clears throat> this isn't under the carpet anymore. This is kind of mainstream, becoming mainstream stuff. There's something that's happened in the recent past couple of weeks. Uh, the thinking is, is that as we get closer to the election and i think as i mentioned about with powell the adults are finally waking up and coming back into the room and saying like what's going on you're doing what um you got the fungus in the in the white house still screwing around doing who knows what uh and because biden is so owned by so many interests because he's been in politics for so long it's almost like all the factions are fighting over him he's like on a rack just getting pulled every which way and all the factions are fighting over what you know mind worms to put into his head <clears throat> and you know when they let him off of the the handling then he starts to say the quiet parts out loud which always gets uh, then you see him ushered off the stage pretty quick he doesn't get the wander off himself he gets pulled off so the representative rashida taleb censured for pro-palestinian comments so a little bit of insurrection in the capital you had some of these dumb shits uh pretty much doing their version of a j6 but i guess because it's you got the Biden Department of Justice. They're not going to get anything happen to him, at least not yet. But, you know, the, the thought I was having a, th a think today um, with the new speaker saying, well, why don't you just impeach Biden? Well, when your enemy is making a lot of problems and making a lot of mistakes, probably the best thing to do is just to let them make the mistakes and let it come out and be seen um, <clears throat> and as we keep seeing all the shenanigans that are coming out then you know if you were to impeach him then we wouldn't be able to get this front row seat to all the crap that's going on and, I, and the more that biden and his handlers do this and the more that we see kind of the depravity of it all then i think the more people will want change and so i think that's why the house speaker was told hey don't go ahead and and prosecute this any further at this point in time uh, we'll let the natural order of things fix themselves out <clears throat> wow and uh then we get some more with world leaders wanting a peace deal between Russia and Ukraine. And then Zelensky's throwing tantrums. It's like, why don't you give me more money? I need some more money so I can do this war. Huh? You're not going to give me any more money? I'll take a loan. I'll pay you back. It's like, yeah, take one of these. Yeah. Yeah, so... So that's that's that. So let me. Those are some of the headlines there that we went through. Uh, what else do we got today? OK, 
Okay, so it's interesting. Uh, so Jerome was speaking. It looked like he was speaking at the the IMF and possibly, allegedly, I don't know for sure, is British intelligence and George Soros uh, paid to have some ninnies come running through and shout him down. And that's when he was pulled off stage, caught on the hot mic and said, just close the fucking door. And when you think about it, it, there's just so much in the statement. And as I said at the top of this, uh, the way that he said it was just in a way that he's tired of this all. And I think that, again, the, the kind of the overall uh, thoughts here is a lot of other people are tired too. And they're just not putting up with it anymore. The whatever the millennials or the generation Z, generation Z, however you want to pronounce it, uh, the crybaby-ish of it is it's just at a point where it's like, no, like, do you want your country to become a a communist cesspool, garbage and crap? I'm not in that camp. So, yeah, close the fucking door and all that stuff. Just don't need it. And it is it is like we're getting to kind of a climactic scene in a big movie here. Uh, because there is a bit of a run up to the, the next presidential election. It's going to be an important one. And my hope is, and just what I'm seeing, is there's not going to be a lot of ways to attack this election. Uh, most, For the most part, you have to get the ballot harvesting under control. And I think because of what uh, Dinesh D'Souza put forward with the 2,000 mules gives us the insights in what we can do and the vigilance that we can do. Now I'm in Canada, so uh, there's not nothing that I can do with the American election. Can Canadian elections are pretty good on the federal level. It's basically you got a piece of paper, you got a pencil, you there's no computers involved with it. And there are multiple people that are present when the ballots are being counted. Um, so at, at that level, it's really hard to, you know, at the end of the day when I, I've done Canadian elections before. Yeah, it's all manual. It's all done by pencils. It's all counted in front of, you know, you got yourself, you got a poll clerk, um, you have scrutineers that are maybe walking around. Everything's out in the open. You got all these pieces of paper. You have to count for everything. You have to true up the counts. And then you pick up a phone and you call it into uh, the office in Ottawa. And you have receipts of, I keep a receipt of the stuff that I counted. One, I think, goes into the boxes that get sent back to Ottawa and then another one I think stays with the um, the re returning officer the, the person running the polling station and if there's any problems well then you have to true up those forms and then we get our results at the end of the night not next morning you don't get to see the little jump up of, of the tick so remember <laughs> my apologies remember when Trump pretty much ended Hillary's campaign <clears throat> um, he, he quipped with her let me see if I can find this Trump 
because you would be in jail, quote. You'd be in jail. Uh, let's see. So let's in here about 20 minutes into the debate Donald Trump delivered a menacing threat to Hillary Clinton if I win he warned I'm going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there's never been so many lies so much deception and I think because Mr. Uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country, Mrs. Clinton observed, because Mr. Trump replied, you'd be in jail. <laughs> a little bit of a boss comment there. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. I think after enough of Obama then people when they were looking at the ballot you know was thinking you know all the all the stuff that Obama said then all the stuff that happened to Hillary Clinton and you're looking at the ballot and thinking Hillary Hillary oh, fuck it Donald Trump marked that one on on the ballot punch whatever box or whatever the computer stuff is that you know, people do and that changed things and then then the shenanigans had to happen with the 2020 election to make sure that biden got 81 million votes however the heck that happened well, we, we know um, but coming back to powell is Davos doesn't care too much about Powell. He's cost them a lot of money, probably trillions, not tens of trillions of dollars with the interest rate increase. And Christina Lagarde was basically installed um, at the ECB after they kind of plucked out Dominic Strauss-Kahn. So you have to watch for the the nuts and sluts campaign either they call you crazy or they catch you you know the what live boy dead hooker test uh, whatever the person prefers and uh, rates are not going to go down and pivot anytime soon and the market is basically there's a the low interest rates have gone on for so long that the market got very used to it the zombie corporations got very used to it and they're quite upset right now here's the thing is because of all this, all the, the monetary grift is starting to implode because the money is not flowing right now to Ukraine. Um, FTX was blown up with uh, Sam Bankster fraud. <clears throat> As money went out to Ukraine, allegedly, and we'll probably hopefully see how that money kind of came back through, landed into the uh, FTX um crypto operation and then was pumped over into banks like signature in silicon valley bank so why did those banks get blown up well they they couldn't flex to the interest rate policies policies that powell put on because they were grifting banks uh, funding all the shenanigans so how do we in order to uh, move elections in a way that you want elections to be moved in order to help elect people into the kind of lower areas of government like uh, school boards 
attorney generals and things like that. It takes some money to do. And then that money is going out through funding over to Ukraine, getting washed through FTX with uh, Sam Bankster fraud, and then landing in Silicon Valley Bank or Signature Bank, then going out through donor networks there to fund all this. And then Powell comes in with a bazooka and blows that damn stuff up. Then, <clears throat> you know, put a put a medal on him because now what we're seeing is now that money has gone away all of these narratives are collapsing now and things are starting to move but the big the big one uh, that is now getting uncorked is japan so japan well what's the big thing with japan well the bank of japan finally ended yield curve control well what does that mean well they're no longer controlling the the spreads on their bonds are letting their bonds now rise and what may what the allegedly is happening here is japan has been backstopping a lot of the ecb through carry trades and i think ueda just now shrugged his shoulders it's interesting how Ueda got put into play is there was another one before him uh, who is going to be the anointed Bank of Japan governor and didn't go through with him, which was interesting because Japan's very, they're very big on the line of succession and the, the elder coming in and the one, uh, the next one up bowed out because uh, Ueda had a, a different game plan. Uh, and that was brought up as, as a different way of moving forward. And so with Japan and Ueda now ending the yield curve control, then the only bank, central bank in the world that's doing quantitative easing would be the European Central Bank. And they can't, they can't raise rates and manage their credit spread simultaneously. Something's going to give there. And so you had Mario Draghi come out and saying, we've got to have tighter, you know, remember Mario Draghi? There's no plan B. Uh, back when there was a lot of problems with the ECB and they were bailing out the periphery, uh, 2012, 2014 era. And so he came out recently and just said, well, we have to have tighter fiscal union or it's or something to that effect, or it's going to be, we're going to be done in the European zone. And well, that's, that's kind of Powell's game plan is if you get rid of the European union and let them go back to just being their own little groups of countries, then you don't have this you know, amalgamated entity that is infringing on U.S. politics because uh, Davos is Obama. Obama is Davos. Uh, they work together and with Biden, that's why the joke is they call him O-Biden. It's like Obama's third term. Um, <clears throat> all that's just getting nuked at this point. Even you had Lindsey Graham this is this mind blown. Lindsey Graham stopped talking about rattling war sabers. Like Lindsey Graham of all people. That's a big change. So something's coming. So you know, we have all these things happening. We have European integration kind of coming apart. Great reset coming apart. Climate change hoax. You saw the Panamania man, the, the guy with the beard, and he shot a couple of the climate change protesters, like complete Michael Douglas falling down style. Just kind of like just had it. Just had it. It's like no more. And it's again, it's it's goes back to Powell. Close the fucking door. It's like some of these people just just, just had it. <clears throat> and so this is this is the scary thing is when just normal people just kind of emotionless just start smacking down all the shenanigans that's been happening. Um, Great Reset has taken some hits. The manufactured war in Gaza. 
time. And then, you know, there, did you know with Gaza that there are you know, gas rights that have been, um, that are going to return to Gaza uh, potentially in 2024? I don't know exactly when, but they would return to Gaza. And if Israel basically pushes Gaza out, then Israel can potentially get the, the gas claims and then move the gas up through Cyprus, up through Greece and into the European Union and start making making a chunk of change on this. Then they'll do things to block um, and do things potentially to block Qatar and well, Iran's going to be a hard one because then it depends on if um, Turkey wants to run gas lines and potentially get uh, some of that purchased. But if, um, I was going to say purchased in the EU, but that falls apart, then uh, falling apart, meaning, you know, who's, who's going to be able to fuel the European Union? Is it going to come through Turkey? Is it going to come through Greece? The EU and Christine Lagarde and all her minions and, um, Ursula von der Leyen, I call her, that's my name, has, they have control of Greece. They've basically taken everything from Greece back in the, in the days of the periphery. So there would be a, a, a conduit through there, but Turkey is the important one in the region right now. Uh, Turkey and Iran. And Erdogan has a lot of, so he just, finished winning the election he's now he's going to be around for a while and he has a chance to influence some policies so you know <clears throat> another thing that i think uh, was put middle east aside for a moment another thing that i think has happened possibly that could be quite substantial is the Marsha Blackburn issuing a subpoena for Epstein flight logs. Um, not that we're going to see anything. I don't expect that we're going to see anything. But what I expect is there might be uh, with certain people some information that kind of comes on to their desk and they read this information. And basically you can see that they're potentially implicated in uh, if any of them stepped onto the plane uh, then that can be quite bothersome if that information gets out that might be enough of a hook to get certain people to start doing things in a different way especially if Powell is right and he says just close the fucking door and that if that has any tie-in to anything Epstein I don't know I don't know any of this stuff I can just put conjecture out there and say if that's true then or in or even if you just you know think about it in your mind that a Powell he's basically got the New York banks behind him and the New York banks most likely know where the money flow has been so if you take flight logs and you match it with monetary flows you can tell a story and then you can potentially threaten to say you know what i can cut off your political funding streams and a lot of these creatures on capitol hill need their political funding streams to keep their little fun way of living to a particular standard and if that in any way is threatened to go away especially for those that have been in the grift for a long time and need the grift to keep on going some of the sovereignists most likely don't need the grift and most likely wouldn't have been on a plane anyhow so there's not much dirt on them but they don't have power in order to get power some of these people have to be corruptible. And once they determine that they're corruptible by potentially, you know, putting you on a flight, going out to an island, 
doing very gross, despicable acts to people who are underage, and then they validate that, yes, these people can be corrupted, uh, then they can let them in on the grift. But again, if if Marsha Blackburn gets her way and the flight log information gets connected with perhaps banking information, then you're going to see a lot of these creatures grabbed by the short and curlies starting to change their tune. So again, Lindsey Graham has changed his tune a little bit. That's mind-blowing. So, <clears throat> so I think that's, that's the big gambit that we're seeing now. We're seeing uh, potentially tighter EU integration, or it's going to collapse, but it's not going to collapse in, I think, a nasty way. I think some of the countries are already, uh, they're going to chart their way through it. Um, but the, the, uh, the flip side of that is they don't do the great reset at a large level like they're trying to do at the global level in the pandemic they're going to take the eu nations and start crushing them really hard poland is an interesting one to look out for keep an eye out for poland because poland has been increasing their gold reserves so we're looking for here's the thing to look for is a move of the eu into poland's fiscal stuff and if you see him nosing around for gold nosing around for foreign currency reserves then potentially they're trying to rein poland in because if poland if poland goes the way i think that they're going they might want to like just let's put a for instance together say for instance that you know Zelensky keeps doing what he wants his banging on the paper give me loans give me loans keep the war going and if we get a cold winter and russia just says fuck it again back to powell close the fucking door and russia just basically says okay we're just going to close the fucking door while you're all out playing in the middle east they go through and they capture bring odessa back into the historical russian zone of influence then poland might want to go and get their ancestral lands from western ukraine and bring that back into the fold so even poland has changed their tune they're not looking to go they, they don't they don't care much for nazis they don't care much for russians they've been in the middle of it for so long they just rather say you know what potentially they might break from the eu in order to break from the eu they need enough gold and other foreign reserves in order to make that move especially if hungary wants to make that move uh possibly romania and those areas around the danube if russia gains control of odessa that could be a way for romania hungary serbia and those interior countries to say hey now we got a connection through the danube they can uh, make amends with russia and say, yeah, just give us access to be able to move stuff out into the Black Sea. And that creates a conduit for those countries who are landlocked to have better access to a shipping corridor through water. So that's another thing to look out for uh, that's coming up. So there's a lot of things going on. Um, just, again... Uh, the theme here is Powell closing the fucking door on it, Orban closing the fucking door on it, Tucker Carlson's been closing the fucking door on it, Vivek Horse, uh, H1B, <laughs> Obama, as some people like to call him, but anyhow, he's stomped on the, the GOP parade there and said all the quiet parts out loud because he's closing the fucking door on it. Jamie Dimon's closed the fucking door on it. It's all of it. It's it's You're seeing it. And it's a lot of people are tired and keep that in mind so I'm going to flip this stream over to gaming um, have a good one peace and keep your head on a swivel <laughs>